Welcome to the summit, What is Effortless Wholeness? And I now have the pleasure to introduce you to Andreas Müller. Welcome. Oh, welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And you are all about non-duality or uh, you, you, uh, you help people to know their nature. You could say you, you point to it. And that's what we'll also be talking about. And um, I have read your books. There's the No Thing, Ungraspable Freedom, which is right here. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the first one, actually. Yeah, that's the first one. And that's an absolutely wonderful book where there are also a lot of uh, questions, answers. And then you also have another book, You Will Never Be Free. And that's also non-duality questions, answers, that one you have right there. Yeah, can you show that again? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And then you also have Tavana Lentas. Yeah, that's this one. And that's basically quotes. So the other one is a question and answer book, and these are quotes like that and pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from Greece, yeah. And then you also have a newer one which you did with Justin Allen, and that's the no point, no point perspective. Absolutely, yes. That was a huge project, and that's also a very a thick book. It's basically one conversation over half a year with Justin and it's basically unedited our conversation. I thought that's a quite interesting project. I mean it's edited to make it more um, to make it readable but the content isn't edited so that's a that's a fat one. Yeah, and I have read all of them and I absolutely love all of them because what you express is, uh, well, it's what we are. And um, what we are is actually nobody or nothing or no one appearing as what is basically. And it's already wholeness. It's already, we are already, you could say, enlightened or uh, awakened or liberated. But it's not we or I or you who is, because it's not possible for this separate me to, to be something, because it doesn't even exist in the first place. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, exactly. Yes, that's uh, that's why I think it's sometimes a bit weird or, you know, I wouldn't say like we are enlightened and stuff like that, but wholeness is the natural reality and that's already the case. Yes, absolutely. Totally. Yeah. So there is nothing to find ever because you're already what you're looking for. Yes. Exactly. So this whole idea that there is something to be found would be part of an illusion. And that's why it hardly ever works out for the person, because there's just nothing to be found. It's whole already. But that's the thing. There is nothing and no one arriving in that wholeness, experiencing it. Because what it means, basically, that there is no I means that there is no no experience of, of anything. Yeah. So it, it's like it's nothing that's just happening. And kind of, yeah, one could say so. All there is is what apparently happens. I mean, what happens is real and unreal, so to speak. So there is no real happening, but yes, all there is is what seems to be going on, and that's it. But again, there isn't no one knowing this. This is not a position or a concept. It's just already the case. 
and it can't be realized or it doesn't have to be realized. Yeah. That's, that would be the dream, so to speak, that one day I will be aware of that or one day I'll arrive in that wholeness and it becomes my personal reality. That's the dream. That will never happen because it's exactly this person which still wants to find wholeness, which is illusory. Yes. Yeah, because that person is already whole, but not as a person, but just as what is, like a, a body and feelings and thoughts and um, the appearance of the world and life. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, when I speak of the person, what I mean is this experience that there is something in here, some kind of separate consciousness or separate awareness or stuff like that. I don't mean, when I speak of the person, I don't mean the body or the conditioning or thoughts and feelings. I just mean this sense of, I am now here having a body, having thoughts, having feelings. This I doesn't exist. Yeah. So you could say everything as it appears, that actually does exist just as it is. There is just no one there experiencing it. Yes, one could say so, yes. And but, but in the end, but in the end, as there is no one experiencing it, what is is actually unknowable. It is this sitting in front of a screen and walking around and talking and hearing, but it's not experienced or observed. So no one knows this really. Yeah. Yeah, and also because you do mention the I am, and, and usually when we think, oh, I am, that's what I am, <laughs> and uh, the way you talk about the I am seems to be different, and, you know, awareness and consciousness, that's what a lot of us think, oh, okay, I'm not this separate self, but I'm, I'm that, I am the awareness can you speak about that? Yes. Um, well, for me, the experience to be aware or conscious is the me, so to speak. And usually it's um, what many teachers or people talk about is that I am not my story. I am just pure consciousness, pure I am, so to speak. Um, so I'm not, um, I'm not Peter, who is a postman who has this family. I'm just pure I am. And the rest is illusion. My story is the illusion. But I am is the absolute reality. But for me, it turned out that this I am is as illusory as the story. So... To me, this would just be another personal experience, basically. Which in the end, I mean, that's not wrong, but in the end, it remains unfulfilling, as every experience is unfulfilling. That's why usually around this I am statement, um, there's also a teaching attached to it. And for me, liberation would be when this I am turns out to be illusory as well. As not, it's not real. There is no self that's conscious and there is no self that's aware. Yeah. And it's just another state, you could say. Absolutely. Yeah. The moment there is something which seems to know or believes to know itself by experiencing itself, it would say that that's the illusion of separation. Yes. 
and there is a, a subtle experience of awareness it is like oh i'm i'm aware of being aware or is like, yeah exactly and and then suddenly you and immediately you end up with something that you are and again some things which you are not and again you end up something being real that which i am and other things being not real so it's actually an experience of duality or separation. Yeah. And that's basically how the person experiences. I'm me, I'm only me, and everything else is something else, is not me. Mm -hmm. I'm me and I'm not the table. I'm me and I'm not the room. I am me and I'm not you. And in those awareness teachings, it's the exact same thing. There is something which I truly am. And there's a lot of things which I'm not. My story or whatever. Yeah. Although there are also quite a few teachings that say, okay, yeah, I am the awareness and I'm not my story. But then, yes, I'm both too. Like I'm the awareness and the story. And it is like, it's one and the same. So they say, okay, most of us just think we are the story. And, but then we get to know, oh, I'm, I can observe my story. I cannot be that. But the, so, you know, I'm both the observer and the story as one. So that's, that sounds very, very non-dual as well, right? <laughs> uh, that's true. But, uh, but I would say that in the end, or, or my impression is that that's often conceptual, but the actual experience is still somehow in separation. It's just my impression. I mean, within those teachings, they can be quite clever. And I say there's nothing wrong with that, but of course they can, can come up with all kind of clever explanations to make it sound that it fits again so to speak mm -hmm. but that's just my impression you know I don't really know who means what exactly yeah and sometimes it can also be misinterpreted as it has many times in history <laughs> exactly so, yeah and oftentimes the me, the separate self, will misunderstand it most times, right? It's because it doesn't understand it. And that's also one of your points in your books that the, the, the separate self, the person we think we are, the me, the I, will all, will never find it because it will always be looking and seeking and it cannot be found because it's already it. Yes. Yeah. And of course, it will hear messages here and there, but it will have that filter. And how does that relate to me? The center point, right? So Absolutely. That's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the the problem for the me is, so to speak, that it's not um, that it's not sitting behind a whale. The problem is for the me that the me itself is the whale. Mm. The me is separation. It's not that it does have an experience of separation, and can have an experience of unity. No, the sense of I am me, the energetic experience of I am me, means separation. Yeah. And that's why, so to speak, wherever the me is, it's already there, experiencing itself as separate. That's why there is no connection to what the me thinks, believes, feels, whatever its story is, of what it believes to have understood already. No, itself is the sense of separation. 
Yeah. So whatever that me or I or person does to to know its nature, or it 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 cannot do anything to. Yeah. Yes, it will remain within the dream of separation, yeah. no matter what it understands or feels or becomes aware of. Yep. Yeah. It won't bring it back to wholeness. And sometimes it can seem like it and it can seem like the mind is almost getting it or, yeah, but yes. that's... Yes, there are so many insights and uh, yeah, openings and stuff like that. And the person is always wondering why those things didn't end the search. Because mm -hmm. the person is always hoping, oh, maybe this insight was it. Or stuff like, I've seen a hundred times that there is no separate me. Or my heart popped open a hundred times. But it never stayed. That's basically the person's experience. It seemed so promising. This insight, this experience, this knowledge seemed so promising, but it never actually ended the search. And it's exactly for that reason, because it was all within the dream all the time, so to speak. Yes. So we keep on dreaming and how what can happen so that dreaming ends <laughs> well, <laughs> well first i don't regard dreaming as wrong or bad it's just what seems to be happening and also the dream of i am doesn't happen to anyone so there isn't really anyone imprisoned into this illusion but um, <clears throat> liberation, as I would describe it, is when this whole experience of I am something just crumbles, it collapses for no real reason. And it's an, it's an utter surprise because in a way, one's own end can't be expected really. It can be expected as a story or a concept, but one's own end, yeah, as I said, can't be expected. So it's, an, it's actually a surprise, like, oh, this wasn't real as well, so something like that. And seen from the person, it looks like death. Seen from the person, liberation and death look like the exact same thing. The end of me being an individual having an, an individual life. Yeah. And the end of that then is that it's, it's just all one whole, wholeness. Uh, it's just what is. Yes. And, and, and that's the other surprise in the end. On the, on, the, on the one hand, it's a surprise that there isn't anyone, that this I was never real. And the other surprise is that what happens was whole already. And that there never was anything to find. That there never was anything wrong. That there never was separation. Because this too can't be expected. That exactly how it is, is whole and complete. Not some, not some state when the thoughts stop or when this happens or when there's peace on the world or whatever the idea is. No, that wholeness is already the natural reality. It's a surprise because it, it's, not na it's not whole and complete for some reason, not because it's holy or good or wants the best. No, it's just naturally whole and complete for no reason at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that just sounds wonderful too. Like, <laughs> oh, it is wonderful, but for no one. Yeah, for no one. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't have to be for anyone. Because there is no one in the first place. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I have a little quote here from from your Tavana Linz's book, and uh, there is no bondage and there is no liberation. Everything is beautifully itself. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And, and it, yeah, life is a miracle. It's beautiful. It can also seem like the opposite, though. Uh, but it's like, wow. And I can just be this. Or I am this. I cannot help it. <laughs> exactly. You can't help being something else. That's the dream. That there is something else than wholeness. But there is no one who can, who can or needs to consciously be it. Yeah. It's automatic. What we talk about is very automatic on the one hand, but also very ordinary. It is this, it is whole, and it is complete. And there is something very gorgeous about that. But on the other hand, it's very ordinary. Because it's already the case. It's this. It's sitting in front of a screen and talking to each other and having all kinds of thoughts and feelings and stuff like that. Yeah. So the unknown, the mystery is this. This is actually, you could say, the known of the unknown or <laughs> like, yeah, the appearance of the unknown, which is ungraspable, yeah. right? Yes. And unknowable too. Yes, absolutely. Totally. Totally. In that sense, it's completely blind. It just is itself, but it doesn't know itself or see itself or recognize itself. There is no awakening like, hey, I'm wholeness. Or there is no awakening of sitting in front of a screen and talking to each other. There isn't anything saying, hey, well, I'm wholeness actually. No, it's just blindly whole and complete by being this, by talking to each other, by listening to this video or... Yeah. That's and it doesn't matter what, what happens in life, it's always complete and whole. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So that's why I don't have to do this. This is not better than that because whatever it is, is always whole. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. The person thinks that I need to find wholeness as if it is somewhere hidden in here, as if it's somewhere hidden in what happens. And the idea is that it's my task to find it to create it, to find it, to become wholeness somehow. But all of that is completely unnecessary. It's all within the dream. And when this, when this I am turns out to be non-existing, all of those things don't make even sense anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even experience, you know, we think we are experiencing this whole life mm -hmm. it's an illusion too there's actually no experience yes yes <laughs> yes this is what the person would regard as life when i'm here experiencing something and for the person this is what life seems to be an ongoing experiencing of myself and something separate Experiencing in that sense is separation. Yeah. And that's the dream. There is no experiencer and there is no experiencing of. There's just what seems to be happening, but it's inexperienced. Yeah. Yeah, because we also think there is actually that this movement right here, right now, it continues. And that's why there's a life, you know, from being a baby to an old person and who dies and all. Because it, it seems like it, again, from this awareness conscious eye, that that's, that's what it seems to be. But yeah. it's also actually not even reality either. It's, it's, it's more like, 
it's just poof and then poof and then poof i don't know <laughs> yeah you don't know that's much better because even this poof poof is kind of too much i know what you mean and uh, nothing is wrong but in the end it no it's much more blind even how it actually is how this actually is, is yeah yes yeah yeah and of course i mean that's the thing for the person that it's its presence so to speak is experienced it's not just a thought or something seen from the person it really feels as if i'm here and as if something's going on and as if i'm separate it just feels like that so that's just what seems to be happening but that's why one could say for the person it all feels so real or every its separation its existence seems to be so real because it really feels like that yeah. but as i say it's a surprise that this deep sense of existence turns out to not have any substance it's not there yeah isn't that amazing that it feels so real and that there is someone here and then it's not even there what, like what's that all about it's amazing it's so it, <laughs> it's not logical on the one hand it can't be explained i can't explain it too and as i say it was it, for me in this story it was a, just a surprise that this what i thought that my whole existence is based on me experiencing something <laughs> isn't there <laughs> it's really like what what i didn't expect that yeah and i've often read about it that there is no one and all that stuff but yeah can't explain it it's not logical no yeah because i know you were a seeker before you disappeared <laughs> before i died <laughs> yeah yeah and so so there was a seeking there and an intention to to find your nature and and you you couldn't but then boom it happened anyways but it wasn't you it, it just seems like yeah one could say while i was seeking for enlightenment or happiness i died yeah uh, it wasn't me finding happiness and i wasn't even looking for this i was looking for something of course like everyone like every me is looking for something so yeah while i tried to become a fulfilled me i i died or turned out to not be existing yes yeah, for no reason i don't know why I didn't do it. Right. So we can just all relax or all live our lives as, because there's nothing wrong either with actually living the dream and th there's nothing wrong with anything really because it is what it is, right? Absolutely. Totally. Yes. You don't have to keep on seeking because actually that may even prevent it from happening or who knows, but it's like, yeah just just live and know that it is already whole you're already full you're already your nature your it cannot be otherwise there's no escape from it it's completely effortless right it's effortless yeah don't put any effort in there because how can you when you already are and so and then who knows maybe it will suddenly fall away like it did to you and maybe not and maybe not and both would be within the dream anyway that there is something to to fall away and all that stuff that's actually already within the story so yes all there is is what happens and it's just whole already and there is no real conclusion from it i think that's 
that's a bit the weird part for the person that of course the person would love to have a conclusion from that like ah okay everything is whole and complete that means that I can go on seeking or that I can stop seeking or that I should relax and stuff and yes on the one hand it is like that but on the other hand whatever happens would be what apparently happens anyway so continuing one's life happens or not going on seeking happens or not the apparent dropping of the seeking happens or not and all of it would just be whole and complete already yeah yeah and that that's that's so wonderful too like <laughs> <laughs> oh absolutely well <laughs> it's kind of weird for the seeker but yes you're right it's actually wonderful <laughs> that's the freedom actually yes <laughs> yeah. you're totally right because whatever happens you're already free and yeah yeah, because you don't even exist. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That's the thing. Everything is already free to be exactly as it is. There is nothing controlling it. There is nothing limiting anything. It's just exactly as it is for no reason. And that's the freedom. No one needs to allow it. No one needs to manipulate it or can even. It's just free already. Just this, exactly as it is. Yeah. That's why sometimes, that's why I say it's also a bit weird, but sometimes I say that's why it's called, I say it's a natural reality because it already naturally is like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very ordinary, simple, and natural. And, um, it's in plain sight, you could say. There's nothing hidden. Absolutely, yes. Wholeness isn't hidden. Yeah. And I, I also like the, the effortless that, that we... Yeah, there is no effort to put in to that. Not a single bit. Yeah. Yes. It's not a state that needs to be gotten. It's not a state that needs to be kept. Not a single bit. What we talk about is utterly effortless. And whenever there's effort, whenever there is some kind of effort suggested, it's a good moment to, to, to become suspicious. <laughs> 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 whenever one says, yeah, I know, it's all wholeness, but be aware in that stuff, then there's something, something going on. <laughs> Because what we speak about is it's really um, effortless. Yeah. Because it's not a state. It's not a position that I gained and have to somehow fight for or keep it and stuff. There is no position. That's why it's effortless. Yeah. And that's gorgeous for no one. Yeah, for no one, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, I know, like, everything that you express and also in, in your books is so clear and straight to the point. And uh, it's almost like there's really nothing to misunderstand, <laughs> Although I'm sure it's possible still, but it's <laughs> it's just like okay, and I I just absolutely love the way you express it. Mm. Yeah, oh, thank you. I mean, I'm not doing it, but apparently it's quite clear. Yes. Yeah. How to? Yeah. And. And again, it's it's me saying that in the story and such, right? It's me hearing and reading that, and and so it's still. But it is somewhere. It, it seems like it is 
um, doing something to someone, uh, like maybe it's at a energetic level or something. I don't know. Yeah, one could say so. I mean, it's not really that it's doing something, but for some people, so to speak, something seems to happen and one could say it's energetic, yes. It's not a method, it can't be predicted or anything and there is no intention in that. But of course, there, there can be, it's in the story, as you say, but there can be a resonance and it has, it can have an impact, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Some things can resonate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I guess people who are attracted to this message, it's, uh, it, that's just what happens. And yeah, it's, it's like, and if it resonates, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's what, that's what I mean. It's always a bit difficult to talk about that because the seeker very quickly tries to turn it around into a method or something like, ah, okay, so it's good for me to, to go on seeking, to be interested in this issue and stuff. But yes, apparently there are effects. Yeah. And yet, if you love it, yeah, do it, right? Just do what you yeah, love. Absolutely. Oh, that's the invitation. I mean, if, there, if, if that's what happens, if you're interested in that, or if there's a resonance, of course. Yeah. Oh, totally. There's nothing wrong with anything. Exactly, yeah. yeah it's just... Uh... It, it, one moment, it just mm -hmm. won't be of any benefit for the seeker, because the seeker itself will be pointed out to be illusory. That's all. That's why it's not a method. Yes. It may sound like that, but yeah. the seeker can survive it, so to speak, in the end. It, exactly, because um, if you love it and you love listening to this, and yeah, go for it. But it's still the dream. You're still dreaming because there's still this separate self. Well, yeah, the, the dream. Well, yeah, that's the dream that you are someone who will gain something from that. That's the only dream. Yeah. Yes. But loving this message, coming to this message, just is what happens. Yeah. But oh, it's interesting how... because whatever happens in, in life, it's, you know, it's, it's the, as long as there's a separate self, it's, it's always a dream, no matter what. That, yeah. um, but it's still whole. The dream is whole too. So no worries. But <laughs> if you want to know your true nature or wake up from the dream, let's say, uh, you can't do that either. It just happens if it happens. And, yeah. So to speak. Yeah, ab totally. Absolutely. And I mean, the thing is, I mean, I, I mean, the thing is that uh, the seeker just turns out to be illusory. It's not that here is someone who woke up from the dream and now is awake or something. It just turns out that there wasn't a separation. But as I said, uh, there isn't anyone imprisoned in the dream and there isn't anyone freed from it when the dream collapses. Both just are equally whole and complete. Yeah. And no one has lost something in being me, that's the dream. Well, I'm, I'm separate from wholeness and I need to find wholeness. No, nothing is lost, even in the illusion of separation. And in liberation, nothing is gained. There's no one there who gained anything. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter, really. Yeah, because it's just this, if you believe there's a separate self and the story and all that or not, is still just what is. Yes. Whatsoever. Absolutely. Totally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's effortless. It already is like that. It's not an effortless state. That's what the person would hope for, that one day I'll be in this state and don't have to work for it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, this will never happen. That's why the person always keeps on working on some state. But 
that's the effortlessness that whatever happens, whatever seems to be happening is already free and whole and complete. Yeah. Not bothering anyone really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like you die before you die and um, then, then no one knows that. <laughs> <laughs> you know when, when you when you die for real and you go then yeah there's nothing yes but you can also die now and there's nothing and then, but you're still in the body and yes but what's left is also nothing yeah Yeah, and that is just ungraspable. Yeah, it's it's just uh, un unknowable. Yeah. Yeah, the person would hope that there's a realization before <laughs> before I die, I realize something. That's yeah. what the person hopes for. But no, the end of the dream is just the end of the dream. Nothing needs to be realized. Nothing will be seen in that. It's yeah. just the melting away of that separate energy into nothingness, no thingness or wholeness, whatever. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's the absence of the separate self. That's, that's the only thing that changes. Oh, well, it doesn't change because it wasn't even there in the first place, yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's so clear, and I can I, I can tell you actually I because I had an accident where I was out, I was gone, I was non-existent. Mm. I I had no idea I ever existed in my that I was anything like planet Earth or a universe, and just no nothing, yeah. like nothing. So I, but it was it was black, it was pitch black. Uh, but there was, I had no senses, no thinking, there was, and there was no me there, right? There was, it just was. It, it was like I was fully alive, but of nothing. It was just pitch black, but I didn't have eyes to see or anything. And I, I, there was no form, you know, there was nothing, but it was so full. Like, so the emptiness that's full and all that, it was full to the brim. There was no fear at all, I had no fear, no lack, it was perfect, it was complete, it was very natural, it's like kind of like being home, but there was no thought saying that, it was just, yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> very ordinary actually, right? Totally ordinary, yes. Yeah, but it was, it was like, it was, of course it's like this, and, and it's full just like that, and then as I, I'm back in my body, I, I'm just like, everything is made of that blackness, like that everything is one of the same, this is it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, all these colors and forms and people and sounds and oh, it's a miracle, how is that possible? And it was really like that. I was like, I don't know how it happened, like a magic trick, here I am again. And yeah, so it's like, but there, there, yeah, it's just, and anyway, so here I am, and my mind, yeah, I could see how it was coming, and it was saying, yeah, and you, you have to be, you know, and, and I couldn't read, words did not make sense to me for a while and stuff, but I'm a big reader, you know, and it was coming out, you need to read, you need to, and oh gosh, and yeah, anyway, so it's, but it's, yeah. You could say it's a glimpse, but then th it seems like this separate self is, is here again. It, it all appears like that. It all appears separate, right? It's not just one. It really looks like here and there and all that. The senses, because having the senses makes it appear like that. But without senses, pff, there's, yeah, it's, there's no object subject. But if you have senses and you have a mind and thoughts and stuff yeah it's all like voila yeah 
so everything when I'm reading, you know, everything, you know, it's like, yes, I go, you know, it's like, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but that's also me saying that. It's the separate me saying yes, 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 in a way, too. And I don't know, it's, that's why I'm just like, Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, apparently, one could say, apparently there was this glimpse or there's no one there. And oh, yes, in the story, one could say, apparently you survived it, so to speak. But you recognize it. In the story, one could say, you know it, you've seen it. Well, it's a story, you know. Yeah, it, yes. yeah. Because it's me claiming it afterwards. I could also see how I was like, what was that? And I was trying to figure it out. And I was like, yeah. comparing to what I'd learned. And I was like, yeah. all this darkness. I hear about a tunnel and light because I think I was almost dead, actually. I mean, I'm, I was so happy to be alive, too. I was like, oh, my gosh. But <laughs> so that whole interpretation afterwards and kind of figuring out how does that relate because again it was the complete surprise i had no clue i was like is it really just that but just that but that's nothing to do with what and what is that bliss thing because it, it was completely peaceful absolutely yeah. but it wasn't like bliss you know and uh, it was very neutral in a way you know it's like and i was like but that doesn't, you know, I couldn't fit it in anywhere. And then I met non-duality later in books I would read and I would be like, oh, yeah. yes, uh, but they're dead. I can't talk to them. And, you know, so it's so nice to meet people, yeah. you know, living alive. <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah. And, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. And yet then I'm like, what is all that fuss about in the world about all these different religions and rituals? And I'm just like, ah, oh, what? why and yeah so anyways that's but i know it's all part of the story of course it's all it's all the dream oh, it seems to be just one thing i wanted to say uh, regarding the senses i wanted to say that because my impression is it's actually not the senses that create separation it's when there is someone or when there is something experiencing itself to be sitting behind the senses it's this self-consciousness which seems to use the senses for its experience of separation, but it's not the senses themselves, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, because there are, there's actually a spiritual tradition that some uh, yogis practice to cut off all the senses. Mm. Usually they still end up being I am. They end up being pure consciousness. Um, in that sense, it has nothing to do with the senses, really. Yeah. Even when there is no one, senses are happening, seeing yes. and hearing, but mm -hmm. no one. There isn't anyone sitting behind the senses. Yes. And experiencing them. Yeah. Right. That, so, that, sorry, I, I just... Yeah, no, that's important. I'm so glad you said that, actually, because that was also my, you know, coming back in my body and I could hear and see and all that. But it was like, it was just happening. It was, it was, you know, it, it, it was just like air, everything still. It was still like this blackness. It was just like all the senses and, you know, then, but... Yeah, it wasn't like, it was one and the same. That's the thing. It was just, and it, there was no separation of anything. There was no, yeah, it's, so I understand what you're saying about the, the, the senses and it's, and also the, the blackness that I talk about, it was, I mean, it was fully alive, but there was no one there to be fully alive. It was just gone, right? But it was like this very, there was a lot of power in it. It was like this huge potential. It was so full, right? So, but it was unknowable, this fullness. There was, I knew nothing, nothing whatsoever. There was no knowledge of anything. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't even know that Susan had ever existed, that there was a world. I had no clue. Yes. As, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yet here I am, you know, so obviously I didn't die or, you know, sometimes I'm like, I am alive, but yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'm just kidding. But 
<laughs> but it is, uh, I'm so happy to um, experience this miracle, you could say, because, mm. yeah, it's amazing that, uh, yeah. But, but it's just that what, whatever you, you know, express, it completely resonates with me because I cannot deny it. I, it's like, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of times also with, with teachings, even non-duality teachings, they serve the person. They serve the, the separate self or speak to it. And then, you know, you think you're on, a, on something and you're not. All those questions like, what can I do to become one? Who am I? How can I become whole? They remain without an answer. They can't be answered because the questioner is illusory. And I don't have an answer as well. Right. Saying there is no one is not an answer to you. I can't convince you. There isn't anyone who can be convinced that there is no one. Yeah. Because there is no one already. Who would need that? Who could? <sighs> yeah. And even the description is apparent. It's not even a real description from someone knowing how it is, as you say, from the blackness. How would you ever describe how it really was, how it actually was, can't be described, because there was no one in there experiencing it. So even this report here is apparent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just... Um... That's why it's so hard to talk about it, right? Because it's like, no matter, any words won't do it. There is no truth, so you can't speak it. Yes, yeah. yes. yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not that I keep it, that I walk around in my life reproducing those sentences or somehow keeping up that knowledge. It's this is exactly the same as you described from the black hole, so to speak. It's just what happens and it's full on and it's total, but it's inexperienced and no one who finds him or herself within that. There isn't anything in that suddenly saying, ah, that's how it is. I'm here. So. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Just, just is, isn't yeah. And, and that is the unknowable, the mystery, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't really talk about it. Yeah. It's not separate. Right. And you are it. it. Who needs to talk about it, actually, right? But we still do. But <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But because it happens, not because it's needed. The person might think we need to talk about it, to come close to it, to realize it. What? No, no, no. Mm. This talking about it happens or not, yeah. but not because it's needed. It's already the same wholeness that is the not talking about it, that is the going to the toilet to have lunch or dinner or whatever. It's all, so to speak, the same wholeness. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, I, I so appreciate it, really, Andrea. Uh, thank you. It's so, it was lovely. It is lovely to talk to you. Yeah, and your website, so people can find you and if you have events they can attend. And... Um, exactly. My website is called uh, thetimelesswonder.com, one word. And uh, there's a German version and an English version. And um, exactly one moment. Come um, gleich. <laughs> yeah, I think we went uh, kind of over time, but <laughs> sorry. Yes. And uh, there's also a schedule. I've been traveling for the last years, and of course, this stopped with this situation we have on the world. But if that changes, I might be traveling again. Apart from that, there are online 
on online events, but it's on the website. It's all on the website. Yeah, excellent. All right, oh, thank you. I'll, I'll let you go. And <laughs> oh, oh, lovely to talk to you. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, it's such a pleasure. You're, you're so available. So like, oh yeah, thank you.